Hi everyone! In this video, I'd like to take a look at the mechanism for the Sonagashira coupling reaction as requested by a viewer. So in this video, what I'd like to do is go through the various details that might help you understand why we see certain formations of various intermediates and how these two cycles work together. So if you do notice, right, there are two cycles here. We have a copper cycle here and a palladium cycle, and they're both connected at this point. So now we have two cycles because we have two catalysts, the palladium catalyst and the copper co-catalyst. So what I'd like to do is take a look at each cycle individually and see how they come together. So first I want to start with the copper cycle. So one thing to point out is the copper cycle is not very well understood. They don't know exactly what intermediates form and they're not exactly sure how things are happening, but what we do have are some really good ideas or hypotheses based on what we've seen in the lab. So if we take a look at it, the first thing you want to know about the copper cycle is that the copper is going to help facilitate the terminal alkynes preparation for the final product formation. So what's going to happen is in this cycle, we're going to see that the terminal alkyne gets deprotonated and attached to the copper instead of the hydrogen. So how this happens is these two, the catalyst, copper, and then X could either be an iodide or a bromide, there's a lot of options it could be, are going to react here now with this alkyne. So now we are thinking that this intermediate forms. The reason for that is this. The amine is a base and it's going to serve to pull the proton off of that carbon. But the problem is, is this is not a strong enough base on its own to actually pull that hydrogen off. So what they think happens is that this copper is going to complex with that alkyne in order to make this hydrogen more acidic. Because if this H becomes more acidic, then it's fine, it's not a very strong base. Its basicity doesn't need to change if this one's acidity does. So now this is going to form a pi alkyne copper complex, and that's going to increase the acidity of the hydrogen so that this nitrogen with its lone pairs is able to remove the hydrogen. And these electrons are going to be able to be used to form a bond with this copper here. So now we form this copper alkyne complex, and that's going to be really important for the palladium cycle. So it's pretty much the idea of what's happening with the copper component. So now if we take a look at the palladium here, we're going to start by looking at our palladium catalyst. So now in this case, I'm talking about PDL2. However, there are right reaction mechanisms for Sonogashira that use PDL4. So just understand you may see variation depending on the specific mechanism that you're looking at. So in our case, we've got this PDL2, and we initially started with PD2+, and it was reduced down to PD0, so the oxidation state on it is zero, with the attachment of those ligands. Those ligands could be phosphane, they could be some kind of alkene, um, they could be the solvent, an amine group. So now this here is ready and initialized to be participating in the oxidative addition with this group here. Now, quite often that's referred to as a uh, vinyl uh, halide, or it's also called an aryl halide. Remember that that doesn't have to be a halide, it could also be triflate. So what will happen is these two will react in a way of an oxidative addition happening, such that the palladium is now added in between this R group and this X group. Now, this whole reaction here can be facilitated um, by this having certain characteristics. So one characteristic that helps is that the X is um, an iodide group, or it could be triflate. Additionally, we also want that bond to be low in terms of electron density. So a way that we could have this be a low electron dense bond is if the R group has some kind of electron withdrawing group attached to it. So those features there do help to facilitate the process of that oxidative addition. So now step two. So what's going to happen here is that this that we formed in the copper cycle is now going to be able to react with this new palladium complex that we have. And what's going to happen is these are going to undergo a transmetallation. So now remember, transmetallation, we're going to talk specifically about carbon now, is a case where carbon will move onto a metal group that has an electronegativity value closest to its own. So on a particular scale, carbon's electronegativity value is 2.5. Now, copper's is 1.8. 
and the palladium here is 2.4. So palladium is significantly closer to the electronegativity of carbon. So what will happen is this carbon, for energetic purposes, will shift onto the palladium here. So what we ultimately get is this new compound, where this carbon has transmetallated from the copper onto the palladium. And now also because of all the bonds we have, this X now gets moved back onto this copper, which is nice because that's how we're going to reform our catalyst. So now what happens next is if we take a look at this, we notice that these two ligands are trans uh, from each other or 180 degrees from one another. So what's going to happen is a trans cis isomerization where we're going to transfer from the trans isomer over to the cis isomer. Because once we're in that cis isomer conformation, what's going to be able to happen is the reductive elimination where this group here is going to be pulled off. So we're going to lessen the number of bonds attached to that palladium. So we're going to reduce it back down to what it initially was, and now we will have formed the final product for the Sonogashira. So those are some of the details that might help you understand what's happening in the reaction mechanism and why.